Hi there. Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today we are at Ober Gatlinburg and we are about to go on a wildlife adventure. Now here at Ober they have tons of different things. Amongst those, the wildlife adventure and encounter. Now down here we're gonna find a lot of animals that have been rescued from different kinds of situations and given a really wonderful life while here at Ober Gatlinburg. They have some great habitats built. They do a few feeding times, which I'm not sure if we're gonna encounter or not. But overall, we're gonna see some spectacular animals here in the Smoky Mountains. So get ready guys, because there are some bears out here. And while he's cute guys, th this is not the kind that I'm talking about. Nope, nope. There's some live bears. <laughs> Before we get started, there are a couple little signs just so we can kind of know what's going on. It says here that the goal is to provide a home for injured and non-releasable native wildlife. Also, right here it says that Remember, all wildlife has its place in nature. If you encounter wildlife, please be alert and alert the staff and they will move it if it is necessary. So in other words, if we see something that is out of place, instead of us touching it because we are not qualified to do so, we need to let them know and they will remove it. And that way we don't endanger ourselves or the animals. Now this is the path down to the wildlife as you can see. It is nice and concrete so we don't have to worry about slipping and sliding around on rocks along the way we find a couple of signs like this and it's important to know what kind of birds that we might be encountering it looks like the two that are featured here are the golden eagle and the barred owl i wonder if that's the same as a barn owl i don't know now although the bears here are familiar with seeing people they try to let them still have some natural instincts so they ask that we don't feed them and that we don't throw anything down toward them and that we don't taunt them or whistle at them try to get their attention by clapping or yelling you know just kind of be normal genuinely good people don't try to harass the animals now this habitat right here is the home of the river otters now i don't see them out right now but they might be out a little bit later we'll see i love me some good river otters and then whenever they're not out, they have a home actually in the building beneath us. We can't see them there, I don't think, but that's where they stay whenever it's not the right time for them to be out. It's now time to go see some nocturnal animals right this way. These are Eastern Screech Owls. Look at this in the back, guys. It's a little den of skunks. They're so cute. Just hanging out back there. Look at this guy. He is up top and he is surveying the entire room. Now, I didn't see him until we came up to this next level, but he can see the entire room and he is looking at us right now. Now, I don't know if you could tell by the raccoons over here, but one of them actually has a hurt foot and it was not originally born that way, although it was born albino. It was actually a product of getting dragged by a dog and it broke its little foot. So again, the animals that we're seeing here are given a very outstanding quality of life instead of just being discarded because they have an imperfection. And I love that, that is so awesome. And it's very heartwarming to know that there's a center that they can have these kind of animals and they can thrive. So yay, we're gonna move on to the next section now. And in here, I'm kind of afraid that we're gonna see some snakes. So I'm gonna to try to read the signs and avoid a few things like I always do. Over here, there are two different turtles. There's one that's the yellow bellied slider and one that's a painted okay. turtle. Look at this guy. This is a red-eared slider. And then by the underside of these, I know what these are. These are green tree frogs. Sometimes we get these in Texas and they hang out like right in your door frame. 
Okay, so we're going past this and it looks like this one says squirrels. So we can look at squirrels. Now, something I've learned about squirrels, seeing them at different places, is sometimes they will not come out to play when other people are around. So, that could be the case with these, or they could just be, since it's afternoon, resting. No, this entire wall says snake. This is as close as you're getting to snakes. Let's just be honest, guys. I don't do well with snakes. Like, I just don't. So, for the sake of other people in this gallery, we're not getting close because I will scream like a baby and I will probably push someone and I just would assume not do that. This guy right here is the Eastern River Cooter. <laughs> That's kind of a fun name. He's just swimming along, doing what he does. Hey guys, we waited and they have come out. The otters are out and they're about to do some otter feeding so we're gonna check this out. Okay guys, here they are. Look at them. They're just hanging out in the sun, enjoying that warm spot and we're waiting to find out exactly where we need to go so that we can see them. Okay guys, this has been a great vantage point because we can see when they come across, it looks like another one is coming right now. He's back there flipping around in the water. So stinking cute. River otters are one of my favorite little critters and I have the coolest selfie ever thanks to one of them. So I don't know, we're probably not gonna get a selfie with these guys because they're kind of on a little mission to go right there. but. You know, this is a super cool place to see them right here. And there's several different viewpoints. So this one, you actually get the water view. Over there, you get more of their play area. And then the first one, you get to see where they first come out. And then you can see them from above around all the different areas also, which is really cool. Look guys, it's a hard life to be an otter. After you eat your snacks, you lay in the sun and bask and enjoy yourself. Aren't they awesome to watch? But after we leave the river otters, where does this take us? I don't know, let's find out. Okay, it says that we need to be quiet through here. So, here we go. Okay, it looks like we came just to the right place. Look who we have here. Look at this. Oh my goodness, this has got to be the best view of a bear ever. Minus the fact that he just turned his booty to us. Or she, I'm not sure. Wow. This is the closest that you can get and still be safe with a bear. Typically, you're supposed to stay quite a considerable distance away. Right now, we're less than 10 feet. But we are in this big containment area that has glass and concrete to protect us. So that's why it's safe. Can we just talk about for a minute how neat it is to see the bears? I know I already said that, but again, I can't express to you enough. The one who is walking around right now keeps walking right past us, and I'm just in awe of how amazing that the movement of the bear really is. And then there's one up here who's laying down, and that one woke up all ago and yawned really, really big. And it was so cool. I wish I could have got that picture for you guys, but I was just going. Yeah, this place is awesome. So Ober has done a very good job making sure that there's enough room in the habitats for them to really move around and have different features to move up and down on. They have things to climb on, uh, water to get in whenever they need to, and then just tons of area to kind of just 
feel like they're still bears. They don't just have to feel like they're just something being stared at. And at the same time, it gives us this experience of being able to see them. So that's really awesome. Okay, we're back outside again, and I was just told that in about 15 minutes, they're going to do their second feeding. So right now, you can see the otters are just hanging out, chilling, enjoying themselves. But in a little while, we all know they're gonna be hype and so excited. Now I realize that might not be near as exciting to you guys at home as it is to me, but just watching how that the individual animals kind of play and enjoy their space and interact with the person who takes care of them is so cool to me because it shows you that these animals, again, that might have had a life that was less fortunate are now thriving in such a cool way. These little otters are fat, happy guys or girls. I don't know. Okay, this sign right here actually answers that question. It says that their names are Harry, Cujo, and Odie. And they came from the wild in Louisiana where they had been trapped for their fur coats. That's absolutely terrible. They were rescued from death by a wildlife organization in 2008 and brought here. So they've been here since 2008. So they're a little family of otters. And here's a little bit more information about otters in general. I definitely encourage you guys to check out all of the signs whenever you're at a place. You just learn so much. For example, reading this, you learn that the river otter is a very playful critter who gets a lot of their energy because they metabolize things extremely quickly. So that's why they have probably multiple feedings, I guess. It'd be kind of like an athlete who eats every three to six hours just to kind of keep the way that they are, keep fueling all of that fire behind what they do. Yeah, you learn about that here. You also learn about the average size, which is 25 to 30 inches from head to body and their tail is about 12 to 17 inches. So that is a pretty decent size. And I didn't know that they got quite that big. I've always seen smaller otters. So maybe it's the kind, this is the North American river otter. So maybe that's it. There they are though. I'm gonna call them the three amigos. They've probably been called that before, but I am calling them that now. Now the one who's laying on the ground is very curious. Every time that there's a sign, he pops his little head up. Like he wants to know what's going on, right, what he's hearing. Oh, they just heard her say otter feeding and he immediately hopped up. That is so funny. He knows, oh yes, he knows. Oh. Alrighty. Then we have three North American River Otters. We've got Cujo, then Odie, and Harry. So these guys eat three pounds of fish a day, so a pound each. And we'll divide it out throughout the day. So around every half hour to every hour, they'll be fed, depending how busy we are. Come on, Odie. So they can hold their breath for eight minutes and swim up to 16 miles per hour. They're very fast. Yes, they do live all over North America from Florida to Alaska, so they can tolerate pretty much any temperature of water. And they can do that because they have two layers of fur. They have an outer layer and an inner layer. So that outer layer is water repellent. It'll shed the water off and prevent it from getting down into the inner layer. Okay guys, some absolutely amazing information there about the river otters and being able to see them get fed not once but twice was awesome today. But we're not finished yet, there's even more here. So far we have seen nocturnal critters, a few reptiles and scaly things, and of course the river otters. We've seen some bears, but there's more on this side. So let's go over here and check out what else that there has to be seen. Just beyond the bear habitat, we have some birds of prey. This is the golden eagle, and then also, I can't quite read the sign from over here, but this kind of gives us an idea as to what the wingspan of some of the largest birds might be. So right here, we have the crystal, the falcon, the hawk, we have a turkey vulture, a black vulture, and then the golden eagle is the longest one. Now, if I was to stand in between and put my arm out, 
I only come out to around where the black vulture is. So the wingspan of the golden eagle has me dwarfed by like a lot. Look at that little tail wag. This is a bobcat. Now this is not your average house cat. It's not anything like your average house cat. Although you might think it's cute, it could be deadly. And they're really quick. Now again, we have the story of Rex and Tucker here. They're two male bobcats that were born at a private breeding facility in Arkansas in 2014. They were brothers that came in 2014 to live here as tiny kittens. They have thrived here and are almost 40 pounds now. Now here we have three more bears. This is the tale of the three little bears, <laughs> Peanut, Holly, and Chief. And each one of them has a very different story. Peanut was born in 2001 at a private zoo in Minnesota, and she and her sister were both hand raised so they couldn't be released into the wild. Our two youngest bears, Holly and Chief, were actually born here in the habitat in 2012, and they were a big surprise so yeah they have baby bears now which aren't so baby they do different things than they might do earlier in the day so they have a water feature for whenever they want to get in the water and play they have a ball uh, they even have a keg that they can toss around and do silly things with but right now looks like they're getting ready for the end of the evening they're tired they're ready to go into their little bear habitat home for the evening and uh one of them is actually coming over here to say hi. Well, kind of. As soon as I put the camera, turned around. But that's okay. We can still see this wonderful habitat with the bears. Most of the animals who end up in places like this are a result directly of humans. Humans are the worst enemy of all animals. And so a lot of people think it would be cute to have like a baby bear as a pet or a turtle that they don't really know lives a lot longer than, you know, a couple of years. Fish that they just aren't equipped to take care of or otters, which they're trying to harvest for their fur, things like that. Humans are the enemy when it comes to animals. And we need to remember that animals live naturally in the world around us and that that's their world too. So we need to take a little bit more caution and be a little bit more respectful of the things that are around us. We're already working at an alarming rate to take away their habitat by building and building and building. So we need to try to instead think about that and give back instead of just taking away all the time. I think that that would make us better humans. And maybe I'm weird for adding that to my video, but you know what? Let's, let's just be nice to others, including the animals. Now down low, we have a red fox hiding out down here, just sleeping and enjoying himself. And I don't know that a lot of people probably notice that he's down there because he's kind of in the corner, but he's beautiful. And there is some information about the red fox as well as the gray fox back here. And it tells a little bit more about their lifespan and also their size overall. So right back here, back behind the sign, that's, that's where you can find the red fox. Now there are a couple of other things that I want to talk to you guys about before we call it a day right down here in the wildlife area. If you have enjoyed today's visit to the wildlife area here at Obergatlinburg, I urge you to come out and see it for yourself. There are so many cool things here that you will just have to see with your own eyes to completely understand how awesome that they are. Make sure that you leave a thumbs up on this video, subscribe for future content, and check out the interactive map in the 
description box below. I have tons of different content from not only here at Obergatlinburg and around the Smoky Mountain area, but across the US. Till next time guys, bye.